we are going to talk about vectors of medical importance. In that, uh, we are going to talk about the class insector. Now, this class insector has various vectors transmitting diseases to humans, and among them, mosquitoes, lice, fleas, and bugs and flies are there. Of those, we will talk about lice, fleas, bugs, and flies today. So let's get started with lice. Now lice are the uh, ones which are commonly seen as ukuna in Sinhalese. Uh, these are the uh, commonly known head gloves. So there are medically important lice. There are different types except for the ukuna that you know which are present in the head scalp. There are others as well. So, there are three types of uh, lies which are important medically. Uh, they are the crab lies, head lies and the body lies. Now, we will talk about them uh, in a minute. We will start off with the head louse. The uh, ukuna that we know, all know, uh, which is on the scalp and on the hair in the head. So their life cycle, if we have a look, they have eggs. The eggs are the ukuna, the lady that you know. These uh, eggs hatch and release nymphs. Those are look alike adults. They are the smaller version of adults. And they grow into adults. So there are three stages in the life cycle. Eggs, nymphs and adults. Now these eggs you have seen, they are firmly fixed onto the shaft of the hair uh, and you can see it uh, generally to your naked eye and these eggs when they hatch they release a structure the uh, look alike young adult which is smaller than the adult and less pigmented that is it is not as black dark as the adult one and later on they grow into the adult stage so when we when we talk about the habits, both the male and the female they feed on blood, and generally they are more active during night time, and also they their activity is more when the temperature is more when we are having we are sweating or we are we are we are in a sort of a warm environment, their activity is increased. And how do we get the disease to humans? Now this lies are a common disease among especially among school children and the uh, humans get it via direct contact with an infected person head to head contact or if they sort of uh, have close contacts with the person's head in some way then we can get it and also rarely if less commonly less frequently uh, people get it to personal items like if they share forms or if they share brushes or towels or bed linens or if they share the pillow. Uh, that way also they can get the disease. How do you control lies? Uh, main thing is personal cleanliness to have a bath, uh, comb their hair. Uh, that is one way of getting rid of uh, lies. And then they can use insecticides. Those are the, they come as shampoo or liquid, liquid preparations like creams or lotions. Those can be applied on the damp hair. And then uh, when we wash it after some time, then uh, those insecticides containing in those shampoo or liquid or cream will kill the lice. And so those are the insecticides. In addition, you can, um, you know, you have seen people picking the uh, lice uh, from the head, that is manually picking them, or you can uh, get them to comb their hair so that the uh, lice fall on to uh, fall out of the hair, and also you can use fine tooth forms, which are called uh, uh, panal or kind of uh, there is a lady panal as well, where you can remove even meats. And the other important thing is because this can be easily transmitted among the members of the family and the close contacts, it's important that the whole family is given treatment if there are people, uh, you know, if there are one or two who are infected. 
with this. Then let's move on to uh, moving on to the body louse. Now body louse is actually on the body surface of the human. They look alike to uh, scalp uh, lines. So uh, the size and the shape and the appearance is more or less similar. But the body louse are larger and their color is much lighter than that of heads, uh, head uh, lines. And the medical importance of uh, body louse is such that it is more important than the head louse. Head louse, of course, in fact, uh, is more causing itching and uh, nuisance, and like uh, it is, it doesn't cause uh, much of problems other than uh, sucking blood and biting the scalp skin. But when it comes to uh, body louse, it is involving transmitting certain diseases. So in that way, body louse is actually more important than the head louse. So body louse is a disease transmitter. So it can transmit certain diseases like rickettsial and spirochetal disease, diseases. And I have given the examples of those. Then moving on, uh, this is the pubic louse, which is also called crab louse. Uh, the name is given uh, to uh, pubic louse as crab louse because the appearance is something look like a, a crab. Uh, the, you can see the, uh, the tip of their uh, legs, they look like of the crab and also the body appearance, the body shape look like a crab. So that is uh, why it is given that name. And the medical importance of uh, pubic louse or the crab louse is it causes itching. It is in the groin area, in the um, hair of the groin area, but it does not transmit diseases. Um, like uh, out of the three lies, it's only the body louse which transmits diseases. The head louse and the pubic louse both uh, do not cause. Uh, diseases to humans. They are not transmitting any diseases but they cause itching and allergy and uh, a bit of uh, nuisance to the uh, host. So then let's move on to the another vector which is called fleas. So moving on to fleas, now these vectors have no wings. Their body is laterally compressed. That is side by side it is compressed. And you can see that they have a bigger, stronger legs. Here you can see that they have much more stronger legs. That is because they move by jumping. Okay? And they are dark brown in color. And uh, they, are, they, are, uh, they are blood suckers. And they transmit diseases from animals to humans. So these fleas are mostly... Dog fleas, cat fleas, rat fleas, etc. So moving on, the, in the life cycle, it's a complete life cycle. So they have eggs which hatch and release larvae and the larvae grows into a pupae. And from the pupae, the adult emerges. So um, generally these eggs are laid on the hair of host. That means if it is a rodent or a, if it is a rat or dog or cat. Their hair can contain eggs or it could be even on carpets uh, on the surface or the cracks and crevices, these, uh, you know, the cracks that are on the walls or, um, and uh, even on uh, certain uh, structures, those can also can have eggs. And what happens is they drop off and hatch and release the larvae. And generally the adult stage, that is the flea, can change from one host to another. What's the medical importance of fleas? They are biting, they are a biting nuisance. That means they cause irritation when they bite us, it causes irritation. And in addition, they transmit diseases to humans as well. Even they, I mean, sometimes we can uh, eat up the flea, that is, uh, via food and water, if we accidentally ingest them. They can transmit certain cystoid diseases as well. So how do we control fleas? That is by keeping the home clean. 
and then you can use insects and repellents and insecticides on uh, animals like pet animals and uh, if there are you know there are certain species of fleas which can burrow into our skin under the skin so those fleas can be removed by um, by a minor surgery those are human fleas and then the rodenticides that means uh, you use uh, uh, insects or chemicals to kill the rats and other you know when it comes to rat flea transmitting diseases we can you know get rid of the rats so that the fleas will automatically be uh, get killed when we use rodenticides so now we are moving on to bugs now these are the bugs that uh, which are prevalent in Sri Lanka. There are, there are certain uh, you know, bugs that are considered blood sucking parasites because uh, they suck blood most of the bugs. And uh, of the medically important bugs, there are two types that we generally talk about. There is Cymex, the bed bug that we uh, all know, and the Upuna, the previous picture was of the Upuna. And the other one is this red wheat bug which is shown here in this picture uh, which is transmitting the disease called American trypanosomiasis which is also called Chagas disease. The red wheat bug is the vector of that American trypanosomiasis. Luckily in Sri Lanka we don't have this disease so we are not going to talk about the red wheat bug anymore. Because we are talking only about the side bed bug. So if you look at the morphology uh, this is the Makuna, the other Makuna that uh, we all know. The Cymex bed bug is oval in shape and it is dorsal and very flat. It is as if you have crushed it on the surface and it's brown in color and it has no wings. And the life cycle, uh, when it comes to life cycle, uh, the eggs hatch and release larvae and these larvae become seen stages and the nymphal stages become adults and these eggs they lay on the cracks and crevices in the beds and mattresses or even chairs if there are any holes or small spaces they can uh, deposit eggs on those places and when it comes to adult bed bugs uh, side mix bed bug the, the both bed sexes that is male uh, bug and the female bug both see blood males and generally they stay close to their food supply that's why they are they are in the chairs or benches uh, and beds so that they can readily have access to the blood meal. and generally they survive long period without blood meal so even if they don't have access to a, uh, to a host for blood meal they can still survive and these uh, bugs you know they emit a specific characteristic uh, some uh, smell uh, that's why if we crush a bug it is quite smelly and they can pass from one place to another that's how people carry uh, bugs to their homes like say if it is a public place like a train station uh, the bench or the tables or can have uh, bugs in it and they can hang on to the, uh, the clothes of the person sitting in that bench and then that person can infect their own home in that way because they can readily pass from one place to another. So moving on to the medical importance of bugs, they are a biting nuisance and apart from that they don't transmit any diseases. So how do we control them? That's by personal and household cleanliness that means you need to Make sure that there are no breeding places suitable for them. That means, um, you know, cracked uh, uh, wooden bath containing beds are a good place for them to breed. And if you use iron bars, iron beds instead of wooden ones, that will prevent that. Or you can cover those cracks with some flax or something to prevent them uh, depositing eggs. Or you can use insecticides to kill the bugs. Now we are moving on to flies, flies of medical importance. Now there are two categories of flies of medical importance. Now these medical medical important flies, 
one category does not suck blood, the other category suck blood. So which means uh, certain ones like uh, house fly, flesh fly or blue bottle fly, they don't suck blood but they are important as this is transmitted vectors and among the blood sucking flies we only have sand flies in Sri Lanka so we are going to talk only about the sand fly the other black fly, deer fly and sixty fly they are also important uh, uh, disease transmitting vectors but since we don't have them in Sri Lanka we are not going to talk about them so this is the muscle domestic other house fly uh, it is found everywhere as you have seen and it also has a um, complete life cycle that means they have eggs which hatch and uh, yeah, you can see the eggs uh, eggs hatch and release larvae these are the larval stages and there's uh, larval stages grow into pupae and the through fracture um, into pupae this adult come out of the pupal stage. So this is the look of the eggs in real life. Now they look like rice grains, just like rice, like car leather. Now these things you have seen, if you observe the black color garbage bag that you have at home even, if there are little uh, white uh, rice grain like uh, these kind of things, these are the uh, egg, eggs of domestic, uh, Musca domestica, this uh, domestic fly. So these eggs hatch quickly, of course it depends on the environmental temperature. When they hatch, they release the larval stage, which is the feeding stage. They of course eat up a lot, so they eat up garbage and all this organic material that we throw out. So they basically feed and get bigger. This larval stage of course is quite helpful in species identification as well. Now if you uh, if I show you now this this is the diagrammatic uh, representation of the larval stage and uh, this is the real appearance of the larvae. You can see it has a posterior and then an anterior end. This anterior end is the pointy the this structure is conical, so the pointy one is the anterior end. The anterior end has a kind of a mouth hooks to hang on to the surface wherever they are. And the last pigment has some structure called spiracles, which have a characteristic appearance. Now, with the help of that appearance, we can uh, sort of make a good guess of what the species of uh, fly is. We are not seeing the adult, but if we are seeing only the larval stage. Now, this is the cross section of the spiracles. Uh, this is how it is seen. These are important for respiratory. These are respiratory related structures. Now, these larvae grow into pupa, and generally they are brown or blackish in color and in barrel shape. And through the pupa, the adult emerges. Now, if you take the adult, the morphology uh, wise, um, it has um, thorax has uh, the one which I have shown here is the thorax and it has four dark longitudinal lines with which the uh, Musca domestica can be identified separating it from the other species that we know. So, uh, moving on, uh, this is their legs. If you see, this is the actual appearance of the end of the legs, and this is the diagrammatic representation. Those end with claws, you can see the claws here, and these are the sticky granular hair which are present. Now, these are these actually are uh, now this kind of mystica, the house fly is a uh, mechanical transmitter that means it carries. Uh, infections the microorganisms from one place to another so these clothes and sticky hair uh, help with, uh, with them uh, with their function um, this is the wing appearance with which uh, again species can be uh, differentiated 
and what's the medical importance of mosquito uh, nesting? And now I told you uh, earlier also, it's a mechanical vector. That means it transmits certain pathogens, virus, bacteria, microorganisms, parasites from one, one place to another. So it, it does not involve now biological vectors are the ones where the uh, particular microorganism get into that particular vector and develop inside the vector, whereas mechanical vector is somebody which carries the microorganism from one place to another, just transporting the microorganism from one place to another. There is no involvement of the vector in the life cycle. So, Musca domestica, the house fly, is a mechanical vector. In addition, it also transmits or it causes a disease called myasis. Now, myasis is caused by the larval stage of the parasite or this vector. Moving on, uh, we'll talk about Sarcophaga, the flesh fly a little. Now, flesh fly is commonly seen in meat stores, that's by the name. And it has uh, a peculiar appearance uh, which we can recognize them as Sarcophaga. Now, in the Musca domestica, I said it has all of the general lines in the thorax. Likewise, the Sarcophaga has three longitudinal lines on the thorax. And further, uh, now this is the Musca domestica, it has four lines, whereas the sarcophaga has only three. In addition, the abdomen has kind of a checkboard, checkerboard, chessboard appearance. Now, this is the sarcophaga flesh fly. Now, sarcophaga flesh fly uh, does not lay eggs, instead, they directly um, release larvae. Now, these larvae. At the back of the larvae, there are spiracles as well. And the appearance of the spiracles of sarcophaga is different from that of Musca domestic, rather domestic fly. So the spiracle picture is shown here. If you remember, this is how the Musca domestica spiracles look like. So with the difference, uh, we can recognize that which one is sarcophaga and which one is uh, Musca domestica if we only see the larval stages. Now these things are sometimes important for forensic medicine. So moving on, the chrysomia, the blue bottle, blue bottle fly, uh, the name is given because of the appearance. You can see that it has a green and blue green appearance. And these are commonly seen on, um, on feces or uh, such material uh, animal uh, Nanover and all that. So they also have the same life cycle stages, and then their spiracles are placed on both anterior and posterior ends, and this is how their spiracles look like. So, what's the medical importance? Now, based on the features of larvae, uh, as I said, in forensic medicine, they can you know, knowing what the which larvae it is, they can sort of do a back calculation to the time of death. So basically, it is important for forensic medicine in certain instances. So how do we control flies in general? Uh, first thing is they transmit diseases to us by contaminating our food. So it is important that uh, we prevent our food getting contaminated by flies. So do that. We can do self-closing doors or anti-fly curtains or we can cover the babies with the net or we can use fans at the entrance so that the flies don't enter to the house. Such measures can be taken and moving on um, we can also eliminate breeding places. Now when we know what are the breeding places of Mr. Domestica or Sarcophaga or Chrysomia, we can sort of avoid um, making the environment, uh, you know, we can eliminate breeding places in the environment and also we can use direct, direct killing methods that is uh, either physical killing uh, by sort of um, spraying various chemicals to kill like we use sort of sprays that move to kill cockroaches and all that likewise you can use them on uh, flies and also certain um, we need to give people the health education has to what kind of diseases do they transmit 
and uh, what is the importance, what are the breathing places, how can we get rid of them, and so on and so on. So, when we tell them what are the breathing places, these are the commonly um, used breathing places of breathing by the flies. So, uh, poultry houses, is, uh, dung heaps, human excreta, the garbage, and the organic refuse. All these things are good breathing places for flies. Um, just a bit of uh, methods of killing flies directly. We, I said we can use physical methods or we can use chemical methods. These are few examples of physical and chemical methods. So now we are moving on to the blood sucking flies. Now among the blood sucking flies, all these four species that I have mentioned are important as disease transmitters. But I am going to talk only about the three bottom species, the sand fly, uh, which transmits a disease which is important in Sri Lanka. Now the sand fly transmits leishmaniasis. We know what we learn it. The species which is transmitting, uh, transmitting leishmaniasis in Sri Lanka is, uh, belongs to flea bottom species. Now we recognize the sand fly. Now these are, they look alike like a mosquito but smaller than the mosquito. Uh, and this has a hump back. Hump back in the sense, this back area is humped. And um, they have generally has a lot of uh, hair in the body. Uh, you can see even this uh, wing is very hairy. Even the body is very hairy, uh, even this area, it's quite hairy. So, the entire body is very hairy in appearance. And generally, most of the mosquitoes or most of the, most of the insects, when they, um, at the resting position, they fold their uh, wings. But this one, as you can see, it keeps at an erect position, an erect V position. Uh, they keep their wings so that it is also kind of an identification feature and since sand flies are blood suckers uh, they have blade like cutting plates in their uh, mouth so where do they breathe they breathe in cracks and crevices in the concrete or in the walls or uh, stones or even road and burrows and generally the out of the two the female is the blood sucker they are night biters. And how we control this disease is by using residual insecticides uh, or using repellent applications. You can apply various repellents on the skin. Also, you can wear long sleeve clothes and avoid going to uh, you know, uh, bushy areas or possible uh, habitat areas of the sand flies at night. That way, you can uh, prevent you getting. By the so the other blood sucking flies I mentioned earlier, the Simulium thysops and the Glossina species mosquito, uh, the flies, they also transmit various diseases, but none of these uh, diseases are prevalent in Sri Lanka. Okay, thank you.